Electron clouds near atoms or groups take up space, and because of the Pauli exclusion principle and electron-electron repulsion, electrons can't really occupy the same space. In molecules in which groups are forced to do this due to other reasons, a destabilizing effect often results. More generally, steric effects are defined as those effects involving the interpenetration or overlap of electron clouds within a molecule. And as we saw for inductive effects, steric effects can have either a stabilizing or a destabilizing influence depending on the process in question. Although steric effects are a commonly invoked reason for things happening in organic chemistry by many students, realize that we've reached the end of the list here. Steric effects are generally the least important stability factor when looking at molecules and should really be used as a last resort for situations in which molecules look very similar but have only subtle differences in the way electron clouds overlap within their structures. As we just mentioned, this term steric refers to the spatial environment of electron clouds around an atom or group, and it especially emphasizes how accessible that group is to other molecules as a result of electron clouds around it, which will tend to repel incoming electrons. In some molecules with rather extreme structural features, such as the tert butyl group shown here, certain groups get locked into particular orientations, and this can lead to a situation in which the locked groups engage in steric repulsion. The term repulsion emphasizes that a big component of this has to do with the repulsion of electrons, which get close to each other in regions where the electron clouds overlap on adjacent atoms. A useful way to think about this that fits into the framework of orbital interactions that we've already developed is that the interpenetration of electron clouds here amounts to a filled, filled orbital interaction. And such filled, filled orbital interactions are destabilizing. It's not difficult to see this if we draw an orbital energy diagram for the situation. If we imagine the electron cloud on one R group as bringing in a pair of electrons and the electron cloud on the other R group as bringing in another pair of electrons, then overlap between the orbitals would produce two new orbitals, one lower in energy and one higher in energy. But now, although one of the pairs goes into the more stable orbital, the other pair must necessarily go into the higher energy orbital, and this amounts to a destabilization effect here. So the overlap of filled electron clouds perfectly consistent with our intuition, is a destabilizing effect. An atom or group surrounded by many others is said to be sterically crowded or sterically hindered. A classic example of a very large group that causes steric hindrance at atoms nearby is the tert-butyl group. For example, the molecule tert-butyl bromide seems to be well positioned electronically to engage in reactions in which this carbon acts as an electron sink since it's attached to an electronegative bromine atom. However, the three methyl groups in close proximity to this would-be reactive carbon shield it from other potentially incoming molecules. At the same time, repulsion between the methyl groups actually introduces steric repulsion within the molecule, which is a destabilizing effect. The effects of steric hindrance can be complicated, and we'll clarify this situation a little bit on the next slide. What we can say in general is that forced steric repulsion, as we saw for the two R groups in the first case on the last slide, is always destabilizing. Molecules with a good deal of steric hindrance also are characterized in many cases by steric repulsion, but depending on the exact structural situation, steric hindrance can have a stabilizing or destabilizing effect, and we got a taste of that on the last slide. So let's look at a few situations where steric hindrance comes into play. Conversion of structures that are less hindered to structures that are more hindered tends to be disfavored thermodynamically. As a quick example of this, the tert-butyl bromide molecule shown here is generally more stable than a molecule where bromine has been replaced with a methyl group since the methyl group is somewhat larger and engages in steric repulsion with the other methyl groups in the molecule. Hindered atoms may be shielded or protected from reaction with other molecules, and we saw that on the last slide. What I want to emphasize here is that this is most important for bimolecular processes. Steric hindrance doesn't prevent a unimolecular process from occurring. In other words, a sterically hindered molecule from simply falling apart. Unimolecular processes that lead to the easing of steric hindrance can actually be favored due to that hindrance. And a great example is the tert-butyl bromide molecule. Any process that could alleviate the steric repulsion of these three methyl groups is, is going to be encouraged by the steric hindrance. Finally, the solvation of sterically hindered charged atoms is often difficult. 
and this can lead to a somewhat surprising reactivity for atoms that appear to be sterically hindered. A good example is provided by a series of alkoxide anions with different steric hindrance near the negatively charged oxygen atom. So if we compare, for example, the tert butoxide anion here to the methoxide anion here, one might expect that the tert butoxide anion is less reactive than the methoxide anion because of the steric hindrance provided by these three methyl groups. However, these molecules are always generated in the presence of a solvent, and the extent to which the solvent can surround the molecule affects its reactivity, since molecules that react with the alkoxides have to penetrate through the so-called solvent cage that surrounds each, mo each molecule. Because the methoxide isn't that hindered, it's fairly easy for solvent molecules to get close to the methoxide. However, in the case of the turc butoxide, because of the steric hindrance, solvent molecules tend to stay at a farther distance and fewer get close to the alkoxide oxygen. This actually makes it easier for molecules to approach the negatively charged oxygen of turc butoxide, making this molecule less stable due to its poorer solvation. Because it's harder to access the more heavily solvated oxygen and methoxide, this molecule is more stable. We'll see the solvation effect again in discussions of nucleophilic substitution.